Hi, welcome to DP2 Insights. In this video we're going to be looking at um, auto head alignment and group balance. This is a strategy in DP2 for um, aligning a large groups of images as is typical with school. It's designed specific to that type of workflow in which, as an example, you're trying to have or avoid that checkerboard appearance of a lot of different images on a composite that might have been taken at different times and so on. To get to the head alignment uh, capabilities in DP2 or feature sets, it's cropping and head alignment. As you can see, we have show, these are the basic you know, clear and setting crops, and you can tell, you can see here that I have a list of the crops that are already set up in DP2, uh, which allows you to speed up if you, uh, the process if you wanted to apply a crop to a large body of images. I have the whole order selected here. The head alignment and group balancing window is going to come up, and I'll do that in just a second. Before I do that, though, I did want to show you the setup. The crop and head alignment setup allows you to create setups for use in this workflow and it allows you to um, create setups over a wide variety. You can make as many of these or as few of these as you need uh, and it's a good opportunity um, in DP2 to experiment with what works on different populations of images in your lab. As you can see here what I have set up is uh, an 8x10 which came up by default. I can select other setups so as an example, I have an adjusted 8x10 and you can see that here it allowed me to uh, manage the relative position of the head. I can within that still change the relationship of the um, head alignment to the crop and go ahead and save that to this setup. I've got a lot of other options in terms of uh, being able to set the crop itself and here you can see the crop and it's pretty well indicated um, in the preview window. I can, my aspect ratio is 8 by 10, I can constrain and set that to constrain. The crop method during the actual process though, I have a couple of other choices. I can hold it and allow the crop box to expand if necessary or to contract if necessary based on the analysis of the images um, that are you know in whatever order or shoot that you're trying to uh, that group balance. The head alignment here I have set up to line, but you could use a rectangle or an ellipse. It's really the preference is yours. And I can go ahead and set that. Once I save this, then uh, this setup will be available to me not only here or for other places when I'm cropping, but in the group balance uh, and head alignment window. So I'm going to go ahead and close this, and we'll go ahead and right click as we look at the process for um, head alignment and group balancing, it brings up the head alignment and group balancing window. This is also accessible through manage images and through the user taskbar. You've got some options here as well, just the images in the box, which is what I'm going to do, you know, which is a series of images. You can do an entire shoot or a specific order. So you can really start the process from here and it is part of, uh, as I said, other workflows. So the head alignment in DP2 as a part of the group balance uh, workflow, you would first have to enable it, right? This by default, I'm using this setup, so but by default, um, this would not be selected. Uh, I'm telling it the crop, indicating what crop, and of course I could change the crop and, and save these as a setup. I'm using a setup here. I can allow horizontal, vertical, or zooming. The crop to the face is for analysis purposes. It's not um, saved in a setup or an effective part of this activity. The group balance portion of this process, again, you'd have to select to enable balance when you're first creating a setup. You have three options here. One is an auto, use the auto group balance algorithm by itself. The second is to adjust it using the existing balance, which means that if you've already color corrected these images, that's going to be the starting point, and this is a layer or an additional step so that you can align these images not just by themselves but as a group. You could also use a reference image. You'd have to select it, 
uh, once you selected a reference image you can use that balance across the entire population again it really depends on what you're trying to do you can use flesh slope adjustments with that balance so that DP2 is going to allow you if I were to select that DP2 is going to allow you to slope those images because remember the goal here is to be able to align and bring them closer together in terms of uh, exposure so that they look uh, appropriate uh, when they're used uh, in a group image uh, or composite. So again you can tell it what group the population all the images related orders are in the list. The group balance setup and I'll show you this briefly the group balance, set, balance setup is going to allow you to create a setup specific to a population of images or something that you wanted to use. I'm going to actually go ahead and go to the contents for the help files because I think that this is also a good opportunity to uh, kind of give you a sense of what you do have in terms of reference. So in the uh, group balance tab, it's pretty well explained what's happening here. Uh, and the different va values and variables. When you uh, are creating a group balance setup, it's going to allow you to bias toward the foreground, toward the face. It's going to allow you to manage the flesh brightness level. So you can affect the dark and the light balance. The images of the lighter images can be darkened, the darker images can be lightened, and so on to really kind of bring these into alignment with each other. In addition, you can also create offsets for density red, green, and blue here. Uh, this is pretty well explained here, and I think there's some, um, it's worth taking a few minutes to review all of the details when you're trying to enable this, because once you have enabled it, this is, can be a really valuable tool in terms of making those composites the best that they can be, as an example. There's, here's our head finding, and again, this is another one of those uh, options in DP2, we want to expose as much um, opportunity as we can to really make this sing in your lab. So you can find the entire head, assume that the eyes are in a particular position, remembering that DP2 needs two eyes um, to in order to be able to make this work. The setups, which uh, is what this is here, you can simply name it and save it. I'm going to go ahead and use the one that we've got here and go back to the images and really it's as because I'm going to uh, use it in the way that we set it up I'm going to tell DP2 to process it. What you can see is happening is it's first aligning the heads and then it's verifying the population loading the data and you can see it's running a flesh tone preference adjustment so in a way to um, bring those in alignment with each other. So a couple of things that you're going to note right away, this image here has a red square in the lower left, or the lower right, sorry, which means that it failed. And we can see that it failed because it is, um, it's, her head is, is so much different in terms of where it is. So one of the other options that we have in DP2 is the ability to kind of go ahead and bring it in. So when we go to cropping and head alignment, I'm going to say go ahead, crop, and align that image, and I get the little hand. This is going to allow me to use the um, scroll in my, on my mouse so the, um, and bring this, click it and bring it in. I can move it as well depending on how much area that I have so that I can go ahead and further um, correct these images should that be necessary. And that's really uh, the short version of cropping and head alignment. Thank you.